Did you ever feel like WordPress could be more powerful if you knew how to use custom fields effectively? Today we're diving into an advanced custom fields tutorial for beginners. So follow along step by step and by the end of this guide, you'll have a fully dynamic page that your client can edit with no need to touch Bricks Builder. The first thing we need to get familiar with is the terms. In this video, we're breaking it down into easy steps. We'll start with the basics, getting familiar with the terms. Then we're going to move into creating a custom post type. And finally, we'll make a custom field to bring it all together. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell icon for more WordPress tutorials like this. I'm posting weekly and your subscribing helps me out big time. Before we dive into building, we need to get familiar with the terms and concepts that will make everything easier to understand. I'll be teaching you the correct WordPress terminology for every step as we go. The first term we need to understand is called a custom post type. It's essential for organizing content and separating things out when sites get bigger. It's useful for adding additional content like staff or newsletters, as you can see on my dashboard. The next term we need to understand is custom field. Custom fields get added to custom posts and they're used for extra information regarding the custom posts. Typically, the reason for using a custom field is for control over styling things on the front end neatly instead of having everything in one big humongous text box. The staff email and staff phone are examples of custom fields. Now let's talk about custom taxonomies. They're used to group posts or custom post types together. It's like WordPress categories and tags, but it's more flexible. I'll explain more as we go, but staff positions is a custom taxonomy and I've created a term in it called inside sales for this custom post in our staff who is called Darren Black. Here's an example of an archive page, which is essentially a list of custom posts. It's automatically generated by WordPress for any post types that have archives enabled. And this is a single post page, which is where you'll display the individual content of your custom post. We'll be building this later with Bricks Builder. Everything we've discussed so far, custom post types, custom fields, and custom taxonomies together form the foundation of WordPress data structure. Once you get the hang of these basics, you'll have the flexibility to build incredibly dynamic websites. It's an essential skill that can set you apart if you master it. All right, let's jump into actually creating a custom post type. This is where the fun begins. We're going to make a custom post, style it, and add it to the page. Head back to the dashboard, navigate to ACF, post types, add new, and we're going to create a post type called editors. There's a few key things that we need to watch for here. The post type requires a plural label, a singular label, and a post type key. The post type key becomes the archive page slug. So it becomes your domain name slash editors, which is where all of your posts will list. And it also becomes the slug for the single post item URL. Then we'll check advanced configuration. There's a couple important things to check there. Under visibility, we can choose a custom icon for the WordPress dashboard. I'm going to choose a book for the editors. In URLs, we need to enable archive. This is very important. Under REST API, we will deactivate show in REST API, and we'll go ahead and save our changes. How do we know if this worked? In your WordPress dashboard, you'll see a new menu icon called editors with the little icon of books that we added. And if you arrive at this page, you have successfully followed through the process of creating a custom post type. Let's go ahead and create a sample post. Let's add a user, Dwight White. And we'll use the post content field as his work bio. We'll choose a feature image and we'll publish the post. After this step, you may wonder, how is this different than a post? And the answer is, it's not. It's exactly the same as a post. The only difference is that it's separated out into its own section. And as you can see here, 
We've got the editors slash Dwight White in the slug of the specific post. Now we'll jump over into Bricks. Now that our custom post is set up, we are going to dive into Bricks, templates, and the first thing we need to do is to create an archive template. For this, we'll name it Editor's Archive. So very important to choose Archive from the type, and then we'll publish the template. Now we'll edit in Bricks. The first thing we'll do in Bricks is to set the template conditions under Settings, Template Settings, and Conditions. We'll add a condition, and we'll choose Archive, and we'll choose Post Type, and then we'll choose editors, which is a custom post type we just made, will hit save and this new template will apply to the custom post type we just made. Now that our template is applied, we'll add a section and a container to our template. Then we'll add a block inside the container. We'll rename the block to card. So you should end up with this cascading layout section container editor card, which is a block and it has a post title inside it. Now we are going to go to the container level, select it, select the query loop slider to turn it on. And then we're going to hit the query button. We'll choose posts, editors, and we'll hit save. So we're to, ch to check if our work, to check, it, to check if our work was successful, we'll go to the front end of our website and add slash editors to the end of our domain and you will see that we have a working query on our page now. Our next step is to turn it into a grid. Our next step is to add the image, add the link to click through from the archive to the single post and add the image. Inside the card we'll add an image to the feature image and we'll set the thumbnail size to 300 by 300. Next, we'll turn our section into a grid using the call count class on our parent section. On the editor card, we'll align the content to the center of the card. We'll save our work and preview our results. Now we have a working archive page template. It's listing our custom post with our feature image, and we need to go and add the link to click through to the single post template next. The easy way to do this, since we're using automatic CSS framework, is to create a clickable parent. The first step for a clickable parent is to enable link to post on the post title, add the class clickable parent to the title, and then set the editor card to be position relative. Save our changes, reload our builder, and now we see the whole block will click through to the correct single post page. Our last template to set up is the single post template. So we'll head back to Bricks Builder templates, then we'll add a new template call it editor single, choose single from the template type, publish it, and then we'll edit it in bricks. Similar to the archive page template, we will go to settings, template settings, conditions. We'll add a condition for post type. We will select editors as the post type. We'll save it and we're gonna sanity check our work by adding a section to our template inside of it, we will simply add the post title. Even if we don't style it, we'll add it, we'll save it, and we are going to navigate back to our page here, refresh it, and we can see our template has applied, and we're good to go ahead and style the rest of this page out. Let's go back to our template, and we'll add the feature image from the single post into our template design. Now that we've got our custom post type set up, it's time to add more data to it with custom fields. This is where the magic happens. We'll be adding information like email and contact information to this staff's single post page using custom fields. We're going to head back to ECF and on the field group tab, we're going to add a field group. I'm going to call the field group editor and we're gonna add two fields. The first field is going to be an email field 
So we choose email from the field type and choose type email as a field label. And we'll add another field uh, called number for the field type. And we will put in phone as the label. When we scroll to the bottom, we'll see location rules. We'll go post type is equal to editors. Now we will go to check our work. If I go back to the editors post, I will now see new fields in the editor. When I go to a post which we had previously made, we had filled out the title, the post content, and the feature image. Now we have extra fields for email and phone. I'll go ahead and add Merv's email and his phone number. Now that we've added the email and phone to the custom post in the WordPress dashboard, we're going to go ahead and connect it to our template on the front end. Our first step will be to add a block inside our right column. We'll rename it to email. Inside it, we're going to add a icon and a text box. We'll relay out the direction to horizontal. We'll change the icon size to 1.2M and we're going to link the dynamic data from the text box to the email field. If you're not sure what the field name is, you can dive back into ACF and it will tell you here. You're looking for the name. Let's check our work. Now that we've added Merv's email to the template, we refresh the page and there we go. We have dynamic data. Now that we've added the email, we'll add the phone number in the same way. In our right column, we're going to add a block. We'll name it phone. Inside it, we'll add a icon and a text box. This time we'll choose a icon that looks like a phone. We're going to erase all the text in the field. Then we'll click the lightning bolt and type phone. And this will populate the ACF field into our text box. I'm going to change this icon size to 1.2M and we're going to change the layout and we'll save it. We'll go back and refresh our page and there you have it. We have a custom post type called editors. We've built an archive page that is listing the posts. We have built the single post template and we have added custom fill to it. Now you have a fully working template that is ready to style and ready to hand off to your customer for entering information. You can do in a future video, we're going to cover more advanced features like repeater fields and nested queries, so be sure to stick around for that. If you found this guide helpful, give this video a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to my channel. It helps me out and your support helps me create more content like this. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.